Being a Kid, oh, read by author Tracy R. L. O'Flaherty. Chapter 5, Choose Love. This book is being written through the gifts of mediumship. It is difficult to understand how it can receive each word not knowing what the next word will be until it flows through me. When the great heavens above suggest writing a book, I'm always eager and ready to share, ready to receive, ready to celebrate the gift of a new book. This is the first book written about myself, me as a child, and I will admit, I am even saying, where are we going with the book? What is it that is to be shared? How is it that my messy childhood be shared to bring forth compassion and kindness? Why is the question? So why is this book being written as though I myself truly chose the words? I assure you, the deepest truth of truth is each word is received. I have no idea the chapters, the beginning and the end. I have no concept of the words written before they are written. And yet, it truly appears that I wrote is writing this book word for word. Whose truth is that? How can that be the grandest truth? And all I will say is that miracles happen and a miracle happened to a girl named Tracy. Endless summer days did, in fact, feel endless. Being in a country setting was a place for boredom and a place of contentment. For I had home and home is where I wish to be. I had my dad's company in the evening and on the weekends and my mom often found her way to work away from home during the summer months. That I could never understand. That left the four children, who were fine on their own, to look after things, and things we did look after. Thankfully for my dad and my family, I have always loved housekeeping. This remains true to this day. I could clean and tidy and fix up our home to make it feel like home. But one thing was missing. Oh yes, it was my mom. During this time, we knew that her job was more than just having a summer job. My dad, he knew her being away was much more than being away. Being away to earn extra money. Being away to find herself, to lose herself, and what was found and what was lost. I do believe those years, the delicate years between the age of eight and the age of 12, I truly learned life, about life, in a nutshell. I learned that adults were once children leaving behind any innocence. I learned that other people didn't always respect our family unit. I learned that my mom needed much more than her space in our home. I learned of my dad's heartache not from him, but by means of mediumship and pure observation. A crazy time for the children, truly all being such different ages. My oldest sister found her time as a young, very young bride. My brother, who never said much of anything, left home early to find his way to his college education, and my sister, closest in age, found her way to have it her way in the absence of parents. Challenging times, times of uncertainty, times when all things felt beyond right and all things feeling so off. I couldn't imagine why anyone would choose the life that was chosen. Summers without my mom. Well, she does believe that she was here, available. But if she was honest with herself, she would see that her summer job led her away from the woven fabric of our family. To her defense, she will tell anyone, I did it to support my family, to make money. And truly to this day, all she wanted was the attention she was looking for. Why do people do what they do? Why are some people never content or happy? Why do one stick around like my dad did? But then again, did he have a choice? 
Did he want a choice? Was it payback? Was it punishment? Was it relief that she found her way to spend time with others? What was the truth? And truly, only he and my mother know. But do they really know? Why is this book being written? The answer is so simple and plain. The answer not in big language or fancy writing. The answer is for others to understand why they do what they do. I myself have made choices that led me to great heartache and pain. I have made choices that brought me great joy and a full feeling that nothing could ever go wrong. Now, that was wrong. Just thinking it wouldn't go wrong led me down a path of total destruction of relationships. I look back and wonder, was it my parents that taught me the value of relationships, the value of discarding relationships, the value of myself, and as mentioned, I didn't value myself, not like I do this day. I didn't understand why I was so different. I didn't understand my mom or my dad. I didn't understand how the play would end, eventually, for you see, people pass away. People leave the great Mother Earth to be in the great heavens. People leave, and this is what I have come to know. This is what I depended on. For you see, before my mom found her way to play during the summer months, I mean to work during the summer months, I must keep the place facade storyline. My dad wanted to be a great father. My dad was and is a great father. He is noble and truly my hero in many ways. He is guidance and my thoughts. My dad is in heaven, but with the miracles of mediumship, we continue our play, but our play. We know where to find each other. I will say that he is by my side with every word that is written. My dad has written many books through me, sharing wisdom and great stories. As I mentioned, my dad was a wonderful, magical storyteller, and through my gifts, which is his gift to me, We can write many books, endless books, of great storytelling. This book is storytelling by truth. But whose truth? Back to my parents coming and going, staying and leaving, happy and sad. Frustrated beyond measure with the shackles worn, for even when each chose to go away, the shackles were placed with great weight, never freeing the other. Freedom. What does it feel like? Can you be miles from another, across a country, across the planet, and feel free? Can you be shackled to another even after you leave? Can they be shackled to you even after you leave? And the answer is yes. It can be no. That ones are free in their freedom to choose to leave, in their freedom to choose to stay. Freedom. What does that look like? So, before I arrived to Mother Earth, when my parents had only two children, my dad found his way to leave the police force to become a land surveyor. Why? My mother never understood, or did she want to. She liked the play of a uniform. She liked the play that she could say that her husband was in the police world. She really didn't want him to change his career, but he did. He did because he could witness and see too much. He wanted peace without the shackles of the human race doing things that required assistance, required someone to wear a uniform and hold a gun. He didn't want anything to do with that. He wanted to be free, and what called his heart was his skills and talents with numbers and observation. A land surveyor he became, and with that choice, the family started the decline. The funny part is, he thought, deeply thought, he was doing the right thing for his family. He took a job that required him to live in Africa and many other amazing places in the world. 
His job took him away from my mom and two children. Then, as time went on, our family grew to be three and four children. It was at this point my dad decided to take an office position where he would be home each night for dinner. For he could be home for us, and this was his choice. But if you were to ask my mother, he left her for too long, too many years, flying back and forth to earn a living. Too many times the bed was empty and the laundry full. Too many times she sat alone on a Saturday night shackled to my dad that was far, far away, earning money to be sent home to us. He thought his truth was noble, and Mum thought his truth was rejection. Perhaps this is where I should start.